Something really interesting is happening in Africa right now. There's a massive crack tearing through Africa that could eventually split the continent in two and create a whole new ocean. Africa might undergo a massive transformation with this rift acting as the catalyst for the birth of Earth's sixth ocean. Just imagine the implication of such a monumental event. Thousands of people could die, yes. The formation of a new ocean right in the heart of Africa would undoubtedly reshape the entire continent. It's both fascinating and thought-provoking to consider how this process might unfold and what it means for our planet. We are not gonna die. When you think about Africa, the first thing that comes in mind is its rich culture and traditions. It's like a melting pot of different customs and beliefs, and it's fascinating to see how they all coexist. The continent is popular for its rich culture, various wildlife, natural wonders, and beautiful landscapes. Africa, the second largest continent on Earth, has a landmass covering approximately 30.2 million square kilometers. Within its borders, there are around 54 countries. But Africa may have less than 54 countries soon. According to geographical studies, Somalia and a significant portion of Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania could eventually break away from the African continent. These regions might come together to form a new landmass, essentially creating a new continent in the distant future. Countries along the southeastern coast would become a giant island, creating an entirely new sea from Ethiopia to Mozambique. Africa has been slowly splitting apart along its eastern side for a long time, stretching from the Red Sea in the north to Zimbabwe in the south. This process has already covered a distance of about 6,000 kilometers. Back in 2005, a noticeable crack emerged along the desert of Ethiopia and has been widening at a rate of about 1 inch per year. This is a result of the Eastern African Rift System. The Eastern African Rift started forming around 22 million years ago and is still very much active today. During the Jurassic period, Africa and South America were part of the same landmass. If you take a look at the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America, you will see that they fit together like two pieces of a puzzle. At that time, Africa was part of a supercontinent called Gondwana, which later broke apart to form South America, Antarctica, Australia, and the Indian subcontinent. The initial stage of the Great Rift is now called the Central African Rift System. It happened because the African plate gradually separated from the South American plate. As time passed, molten rock from the Earth's mantle began to rise and fill the gap in the rift. This volcanic activity gave rise to several volcanoes and famously created Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. The African continent is located on a big piece of Earth's crust called a tectonic plate. This plate is gradually moving away from another plate where the Arabian Peninsula sits. As a result, the Earth's crust is being stretched and thinned out. This movement creates two main parts of the rift, the Eastern Rift Valley and the Western Rift Valley. As strange as this may seem, it's worth remembering that Earth's surface is in a constant state of change. It's just so slow that human experience can't account for it. According to Professor Ken McDonald from the University of California, Santa Barbara, there are still many uncertainties regarding the ongoing riffing process. He raised intriguing questions about whether this riffing will continue at its current pace, eventually leading to the creation of an ocean basin similar to the Red Sea, or if it will evolve into something even larger, resembling a scaled down version of the Atlantic Ocean. The professor ponders whether this process might accelerate, bringing about these changes more rapidly. Alternatively, it could potentially stall, 
much like the Atlantic did before the initiation of true sea floor spreading. Based on the current rate of the riffing, McDonald estimates that it might take around 20 to 30 million years for a sea comparable in size to the existing Red Sea to form. A lot of years, Stewie. Back in 2005, an incredible 35 mile crack appeared, and it's already given us hints of a brand new sea forming near Ethiopia. But that's not all. Fast forward to 2018. Heavy rainfall triggered another massive crack, this time tearing through Kenya. The consequences were serious. People had to abandon their homes and roads had to be closed down. It was a chaotic situation to say the least. Now here's the thing. According to McDonald, an expert in the field, he firmly believes that this phenomenon will continue to create more cracks in the future. According to geologist David Adede, he had initially believed that the fissure was filled with volcanic ash. However, due to the heavy rains, the ash was washed away, revealing the crack beneath. Interestingly, the locals had a different perspective on the matter. They described the event as sudden and rapid, with some even sensing the ground shaking. While we won't witness the actual tearing apart of Africa for another 5 million years, there are some intriguing predictions about what might happen in the distant future. The emergence of new coastlines brings benefits for economic growth. It allows for establishing new trade ports, provides new fishing opportunities, and supports the development of subsea internet infrastructure all of which contribute to boosting economic potential. The creation of this has created new opportunities and connections to various parts of the world. Countries like Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi and Zambia would have a new coastline. The importance of the coastline is that it would serve as a harbor that connects them to the remaining parts of the world. The splitting would also cause countries like Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, the eastern parts of Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania and Mozambique to further drift away from the continent, while countries like Kenya, Tanzania and Ethiopia would have two territories each. Though the new coastline would cost them millions of dollars while they are in evacuation. It has its advantages, including the reduction in international logistical expenses and the creation of shipping and fishing industries that previously didn't exist. This means they can finally be connected directly to subsea internet cables, if only the connection to subsea cables will not be bypassed. Cities located near the future sea ports would experience significant trade benefits contributing to the economic growth of the African state. This new trade route would facilitate the exchange of goods, further enhancing commerce. The presence of the Seoul Canal would play a crucial role in transforming Africa into a regional economic powerhouse, facilitating increased imports and exports to countries like Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, and extending all the way down to South Africa. As for the name of the new continent after the split, it is uncertain whether it would be called New Africa. The decision on naming would likely involve careful consideration and discussions among the involved parties and the international communities. Regarding the neighboring states, it is uncertain whether they would retain their original names or be identified as East Tanzania and West Tanzania. Such decisions might depend on various factors, including the preferences of the local populations, historical significance, and potential political agreements or negotiations. It's uncertain if anyone will witness the complete split since it will take millions of years to happen. 
If humans are still around by then, they might not quickly notice the process, similar to how the gradual separation of South America and Africa was only discovered after millions of years had passed. Although the process of rift formation can be disruptive and even destructive in the short term, it brings long-term benefits to people in terms of natural resources, diverse wildlife, and cultural heritage. As the rift keeps changing, it will be intriguing to see how the region adapts to these geographical shifts. Now we have reached the end of this video. We would love to hear your opinion. Do you think this significant change will be advantageous or potentially hazardous for the continent? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss our fascinating videos about Africa's facts like this one. So stay alive and meet you around after a few million years or so.